Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'll show you how to use Mirror Repeat in Adobe Illustrator. First, I'll show you how the feature works, and then I'm going to let you watch me create the design, which is on my artboard, so you'll see how fast and easy symmetrical designs can be drawn. I'll move to a blank document and we'll get started. Before I access Mirror Repeat, there's got to be something selectable on my artboard. So I'm going to get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and drag out a rectangle, and then come to the properties panel and we'll give it a fill color. Now I'm able to click on the artboard to close the swatches panel and go up to Object, down to repeat and I have a flyout menu which gives me three options. Now I've already created tutorials on the radial repeat and grid repeat and I'll leave links for those at the end of this video. So for now I'll choose mirror repeat and instantly Illustrator has made some changes to my artboard. First of all, I have this gray bar across the top of my artboard and Illustrator tells me I'm in the mirror repeat mode. Next, I have a vertical blue and white line which is right next to the right side of the selected object on my artboard. This is called the mirror axis. And then Illustrator mirrors the object which is selected and places it on the right side of the axis. Now I do have some controls over moving this axis. I have circles at the top and the bottom and in the middle. First I'll select the middle circle and when I click and I drag it away from my selected object, I increase the space between the axis and the object, which also increases the distance between the axis and the mirrored object. I can move it the other direction, and when I click it and drag to the left towards my original object, it decreases the space between the objects and the axis. Now if I drag my object across the axis line, let me show you what happens. I need to get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'll grab the object and drag it to the right, and then I'll click on the artboard to deselect it, and it looks like both of these objects are now joined together. But actually, Illustrator is only mirroring the part of the object which is left of the axis. It's masking the part that overlaps. Now I can move this back and you see that I have two individual pieces again. Or I can drag it to the center this way and change the spacing, dragging away from the original object. And again, we see we have these two separate pieces. I'm going to undo that, keyboard shortcut command Z, and move my original object back to the left of the axis. Now, whatever changes I make to this object or to any other objects which I add on the left side of the axis, those are all going to be mirrored on the right side. So if I change the color of my object, the color is changing on the mirrored side as well. I can increase the stroke and the changes made on the right. I can rotate my object. I can create a new object. Let's get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and drag out an ellipse. And I'm going to give it a different color here. Then I'll get the selection tool and I can move that around. I can group these together, keyboard shortcut command G. I can use different tools with them. I'll come over to the Pathfinder area and we're going to click on Click to Exclude and that's going to remove the color where the objects were overlapping, but I don't like the way it changed the color of my square and I want to change that back to blue. Well, I can't just come over and click a color or I change both of the objects. So I'll undo that, keyboard shortcut, command Z, and command Z. Now I'm going to move to the Layers panel and show you how you can target just one object in the group and make a change. I'll twirl down on my group. I'll twirl down one more time. I see the layer that has the remnant of my circle and the layer that has the remnant of the rectangle. Right now I have these little squares on the right side showing me that everything is selected. But if I just target this rectangle by clicking on the little ball, then the square where my circle is located is now gone and I'm only going to be working with the rectangle. And you can see on the artboard as well, the rectangle has the selection lines around it. So I'll move to the properties panel, click on the fill color icon and change this back to blue. Then I'll move back to the layers panel and the changes are reflected in the layers panel. 
To me, this is the easiest way to target objects and change them. And if you want to know more about layers, you can check out my video on using the Layers panel in Adobe Illustrator. Let's go back to the Properties panel, and I'll move these objects up and out of the way, and let's look at what happens with a drawing tool. I'll get the Blob tool, keyboard shortcut Shift B, and I'll increase the size of the brush head by pressing down on the right bracket a number of times, and then I'm going to just draw a little line out, and I'm going to cross the axis with it. Now what Illustrator does is it mirrors the part of the line which is to the left of the axis and then let's get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V and when I hover over this you see the part that crosses the axis is now masked by Illustrator. So that means it's not gone and I can either grab this and move it further away from the axis or I can grab this little space circle and move and that's going to allow me to choose how much of the line is masked and how much of it is mirrored. So that's how our spacing circle works. I'm going to delete this line and I'll move our objects back over here a little closer to the axis and I'll show you what the top and the bottom circles do. These control the angle of the axis and I can click down on either one of these and drag them to change the angle in either direction. And as I do, the original object doesn't move, it's only the mirrored object that moves. And now let me click on the artboard to deselect this, and you can see that because now my object is crossing over the axis, part of it is masked, and it gives the appearance that these objects are joined together. I'm going to undo that, keyboard shortcut, command Z. Notice that as I rotate, the center of the rotation is wherever this little middle circle is. I can drag it down and grab the bottom circle, and as I drag around, I'm rotating from the new location of that little circle. I'm going to undo that, keyboard shortcut, command Z, and I'll move the circle back to the top. And finally, if you have a specific angle that you want to set for the mirror repeat, you can come over to the Properties panel, and in Repeat Options, you can simply type in a value. I'll type in 45 degrees and press the Return key, and this 45 degrees has given me quite an unusual design. I'll click on the artboard so you can see it, and then I'm going to undo that, Keyboard Shortcut Command Z. And you can also work with the mirror axis horizontally by typing in 180 degrees and pressing the Enter key. Notice that even though the axis has changed, our original object has not. So basically what Illustrator is going to be doing is mirroring the object from a different direction. Right now my mirrored object is way off the artboard, so I'm going to grab the original object and drag it down, and then move the spacing circle towards that original object to reduce the space between the objects and the axis. And that's basically how the mirror repeat functions work. Next I want to show you how fast and easy it is to create symmetrical designs. So I'm going to move to a new document. I've already set up Mirror Repeat, and I have the swatches I'm going to be using right on my artboard to make the drawing go faster. I'm also going to zoom out a little bit to make the drawing easier for me. I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command Minus, and then I'll speed up the video because you don't need to see me draw as much as I want you to see how fast this is to do. Once I'm finished, I'll have one last tip for you, but let's get started with the drawing. I'm going to use the pencil tool, that's keyboard shortcut N, and I'll go over and remove the fill color, and I'm going to draw with a three-point stroke. I'm going to be drawing across this axis, both at the bottom and the top, so that the designs look like they're intersecting with each other. And once I've finished drawing these, I'll get the selection tool, and I'm going to alternate between it and the eyedropper tool to make the changes in color and that's why I have the swatches on my artboard because it makes it so simple. I'll draw out the leaf again with that pencil tool and change its color then I'm going to use the drawing mode draw inside and the blob tool. And I'll change the weight of the blob tool to 40 points and just draw alongside here then get the direct selection tool and I can change that color. 
Then I'll change the drawing mode back to normal. Now I'm going to use the blob tool again, but this time at 20 points, and I'll drag a guide down so that I know where I want to start. I'll click the first blob on that line, and then as I rotate back and forth between the top and the bottom, I'm decreasing the blob by one point each time. And I do that by pressing on the left bracket. When I finish with the bottom part, I'm going to keep the blob the same size for a few dots, and then I'll decrease it one more time. And when I'm finished drawing, I'll select the guide and I'll delete it. Now what if I wanted to change part of the flower's color on the left side and not have it mirrored on the right side? I can do that, but I'm going to have to move out of mirror repeat, and I want to make sure I have the design exactly the way I want it. I'll not be able to come back and use the mirror repeat functions. Well, I think I'm fine the way it is, so I'm going to go ahead and exit mirror repeat. I can do that several different ways, but the easiest way for me is just to double click outside of the artboard, and then I'm back into to a normal view. Now let's look at the layers panel and see how it looks. Right now my design is showing up as a mirrored layer, so I can't twirl down and access the individual parts. What I need to do is select that layer, come up to Object, and choose Expand. Object and Fill are checked, and I'm going to say OK. Now we have a change in the Layers panel. It changed from the mirrored object to a group. And I can twirl down, and I have the right side and I have the left side on separate layers. Let me enlarge these swatches so that you can see these a little better. Right now, I know everything is selected because I have these little boxes on the right side of each of the layers. I only want to target the left side, so I'll click on the little ball next to the left layer, and that's going to deselect the right side. Now I want to twirl down on the left layer, and I'm going to have to twirl one more time to have access to everything on that layer. What I'm looking for is the outside yellow part of my flower, and when I find that, I'm going to target it by just clicking on the little ball. Now I can come over to the Properties panel, open the Color Fill icon, and change just that color. And I think this could really be cool if you went through a whole design and created it black and white or complementary colors. The sky's the limit with what you can do using mirror repeat and creating some very interesting designs. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something about mirror repeat. I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and click on that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.